Welcome back to the channel. This is Ready Storm and you are watching fourth part of What if Naruto showed his true self? If you enjoy this video please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Now wasting no more time, let's start the story. Uzi, Kanaha and the Akatsuki were all looking for a Jinchuriki named Yutataki. Uzi wanted him so he could keep him safe and teach him how to fight better. Kanaha wanted him so that they could get a new weapon to use against Iwa in the war they had started a year and a half before. Akatsuki needed him because he was the last piece of the puzzle to bring the Jubi back. Hanada and Kimimaro followed their squad leader through the forest of dead trees that was between the land of lightning and the land of fire. All three of them knew that the next moment could decide whether they win or lose the war with Akatsuki. Yudataki, the last unaccounted for container, was about to be surrounded by three different forces. In what could be called the most destructive fight they had ever been in, they were defeated. Naruto said as he jumped from tree to tree, remember, we have to go in and grab Yudataki before he can get away. Then we have to go back and explain ourselves to him. We can't let the Akatsuki get him at any cost, or there could be hell to pay in the future. Kimimaro asked. Who do you think Akatsuki sent to get Yudataki? Naruto said, I think they would have sent Hidan, Didera, and Orochimaru, that expect new members. I can't believe they hired Orochimaru after Itachi and Kisame left them when they attacked Uzi, and I don't think they recruited Hidan, Didera, or Orochimaru after that. Hinata said, it would probably include Pain and Kakuzu if we hadn't killed them in that attack. Naruto laughed and said, yeah. It probably would have been if you guys hadn't torn Kakuzu to pieces and Jiraiya and I hadn't overpowered Pain. I liked how Gara killed Sasori. We would have ended it right then and there if Madara hadn't come and saved the rest of them and got in the way of your fight, Kimimaro muttered. That is true, but the man is a fool. No matter what he does, he will never be able to control the Jubi's power. If that thing is released, only the power of a biju will be able to destroy it. If that happens, only we Jinchuriki will be able to stop the beast. Said Naruto. Hanada asked Naruto-kun, do we have any help on this mission? Naruto said, Killer B, Fu, and Gara are all on their way. If they get here on time, we can't fail this mission. We also heard that ninja from Konoha are coming. Kimimaro asked, who do you think they would send? Naruto replied, I don't know, but I expect powerful ninja who are loyal to Danzo. He wouldn't risk losing such a powerful weapon because someone's feelings got in the way. Either way, we can't let them get in the way of our mission. So, they kept going through the dead tree forests until they reached a place where the fate of all people would be decided. It took them two hours, but they finally got there, and the travelers they asked for information didn't lie when they said he lived among huge ruins. They had finally reached a huge abandoned city. Temples that had been taken over by plants were all over the city, and in the middle of the city was a huge arena. This city was over a thousand years old, but no one had ever lived there because it was said to be cursed. When Naruto saw the city, it made his skin crawl because he felt like all hell was about to break loose there. I don't like how this place looks. I want you two to be ready for anything that might attack us, Naruto said as they started to slowly walk through the city looking for Yudataki. As they got closer to one of the big temples, it suddenly blew up in a huge red blast of energy. When the dust settled, they saw a man in a blue kimono jump from building to building as a man with a big scythe and a blonde man on a clay bird chased him. Damn, we have to go after them. Watch out for Orochimaru and anyone else who might get in the way, Naruto told Hanada and Kimimaru as he jumped onto the roof. Naruto asked Hanada, where is Orochimaru? As Hanada turned on her by a Kugan. Hinata told Naruto, he's setting up a trap for Yudataki a few hundred meters ahead of us. Hinata also told Naruto that Shinobi were coming from the opposite direction to attack Orochimaru. Yudataki was not having a good day. No, he was having a hell of a day. First, he had to hide in this crazy wrecked city, and now the Akatsuki were after him. Man, 
What were his chances of getting away from 2s ranked ninja who were missing? Well, he would do his best to get away and stay alive. But first, he had to get rid of these two crazy people who were following him. He was thinking so much about the ninja behind him that he didn't notice the mass of snakes flying toward him until it was too late. Orochimaru's voice said, Kukuku, it looks like the poor Jinchuriki fell for our trap. It's a shame, though, because I've always wanted to know how strong a Jinchuriki is at full strength. Hidan yelled as he jumped off one of the buildings, Fuck you, Orochimaru. Lord Jashin wanted his blood, and now I can't take it. When we're done killing these fucking biju, I'll give Lord Jashin your blood instead. Calm down, Hidan. We have this Jinchuriki, and after we seal him, we can go to a village and give you all the sacrifices your crazy god wants. Yeah. Yelled Didera as his clay bird landed among the three of them. Yudataki yelled, damn you three. I'll get out of here and make you pay. As he started to use the power of his biju. Kukuku, I don't think so. Orochimaru laughed as he sealed Yudatake's seal to stop his last act. Well let's get going, Madara doesn't like to wait too long. Said Didera. Hidan yelled, fuck that Uchiha. I liked Pain a lot more than his emo ass. A voice from above the three said, I couldn't agree more. At least Pain did it all to bring peace. When the three of them looked up, they were surprised to see three ninja with Uzi headbands ready to fight. Orochimaru said with a smile, so the Kiyubi brat has found us. Is that you, Kimimaro? It's been a while. How have you been? Kimimaro only said, better, as he pulled out both of his swords. Naruto pulled out his black blade and said, we came here for Yudataki. Give him back to us, and we'll let you go. Who the fuck do you think you are? Lord Jashin will bathe in the blood that I give him from your fucking corpse. Shouted. Do I even need to say who? He is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The one who holds the Kiyubi, a voice said from the shadows, and Itachi Uchiha and Kisame came out of the shadows. Naruto yelled, Hey, Itachi. It's been a long time since we've seen each other, and howdy, fishman. Kisame yelled, Damn you. Stop calling me fishman. No, Itachi, I don't think it was a good idea to show yourself, Naruto said. Itachi asked, Why is that, Naruto? Naruto just sighed and pointed to a place on one of the temples. There were three ninjas standing on the temple. One had pink hair, one was very pale and had black hair, and the third had black hair and hair that looked like a duck's behind. Sasuke glared at Itachi and yelled, Itachi. I will kill you for what you've done. Naruto pointed his sword at the Uchiha and said, save it for another time, Uchiha. The adults have some business to take care of first. Naruto. Stay away from this, or I'll kill you too, Sasuke growled. Like you could, Naruto said. Shut up, Naruto. Sasuke-kun is so much stronger than you. Screamed Sakura in a screeching voice. Damn, I was hoping Sakura would calm down a bit, but I guess that was just a wish on my part. Who is the new guy? He looks like he needs more sun, Naruto asked as the pale guy just smiled a creepy smile. Hum. So this is a waste of time? Sai asked Sakura. When Naruto heard this, he couldn't help but laugh his head off. Naruto yelled, Wow, I already like this guy more than you guys. At least insults don't make him mad. Stop this fucking fighting. Lord Jashin wants sacrifices. The last group standing gets the fucking biju. Hidan yelled as he grabbed his scythe. Naruto yelled, Fine, you're mine, you immortal freak as he jumped at Hidan. Kimimaro, go get rid of Orochimaru. Hanada, try to beat Sakura. I'll have Itachi, Sasuke growled as he charged Itachi. Sai, 
kill that blonde, and Sakura, kill the demon's whore. Naruto and Hidan Hidan yelled at Naruto, you'll make a great sacrifice to Lord Jashin. As he came up to meet him. As the two weapons hit each other, sparks flew everywhere. Again, they turned and met in the middle, but Hidan's longer reach made Naruto move back a little bit each time. Even though Naruto was waiting for the right time, Hidan was soon back in the air and easy to attack. Naruto yelled, wind release, drilling air spears. As he fired six spears. All of them attacked Hidan, sending him through a crumbling building and causing it to fall on the immortal. He wasn't down for long though, and soon he was back, but this time he had four holes in him. He yelled as he threw his huge scythe at Naruto, haha. Lord Jashin will love your blood. Naruto jumped to the side to avoid the blade, but he didn't see the blade coming at him from behind until it was almost too late. Naruto said, damn, I can't let that freak hit me once, or it's over, as he threw a wind blade at Hidan, but the immortal just cut right through it with his scythe. Again, they tried to tear each other apart by dancing with their swords. Naruto started to cut Hidan several times by making his blade longer with wind chakra. This didn't do much, though, because Hidan just shrugged off the pain and kept coming. Naruto jumped back and did one of his favorite jutsus. Naruto yelled, wind release. Wind dragon of the blade. As he swung his sword and sent a huge wind dragon flying at Hidan. Hidan jumped on top of a building to get away from the dragon, but Naruto swung his sword up to send the dragon back toward Hidan. Hidan was caught off guard by this, and the dragon crashed into him in the building he was standing on, exploding in a huge amount of energy. Hidan got back up from the wreckage of the explosion and looked at Naruto. His body was full of cuts, bruises, and burns, and one of his arms was gone. Hidan yelled, this isn't over, brat. No matter what you do, you can't kill me. If you cut off a snake's head, the body will die, or if you destroy the body, nothing will live. Or something like that, Naruto said calmly as the blue light from his sword started to shine. Hidan yelled, fuck you. As he threw his scythe at Naruto again, but it went right through the ghost of Naruto. It's over, was the last thing Hidan heard before he was thrown into the air hard. He went straight up until he was hit in the face again. Before he hit the ground, he felt the air underneath him get hot for a second. Kanpeki Rakurai. A huge blast of blue and white light tore through Hidan's body and turned it into nothing. The explosion kept going until it hit one of the huge temples in the destroyed village and blew it up in a single bright flash. Naruto yelled, there can only be one. As electricity ran through his body. Sorry, but I thought it might make sense since Naruto just killed an immortal. Hanada and Sakura's fight. So the demon's whore wants to fight me? This shouldn't take too long, whore. I'll just beat your behind like Neji did all those years ago, Sakura said with confidence. Bitch, I'm going to wipe that smirk off your face. I wonder what Sasuke will think of you when you're scarred for the rest of your life. At least Naruto loves me for who I am and not how I look, Hanada said as she took up her new Juken stance. Don't you dare say that. I'll kill you. Sakura yelled as she ran at Hanada faster than the Hyuga thought she could. Hanada used her flexibility to get out of Sakura's way when she tried to punch her. But she didn't think that Sakura's punch would make such a big hole in the ground after she hit it. Hanada took a step back to keep her balance and gave Sakura a mean look. Hanada asked, how in the hell did you learn Tsunade's strength technique? Hey, we found them when we raided the Senju compound after she left. Too bad most of her techniques were gone, but we made do with what we had said Sakura as she put on her combat gloves. Funny, said Hanada. Too bad I learned from the women who came up with the techniques. Sakura said, ha, huh, a loser like you could never beat me in a fight. I've already beaten hundreds of ninja. Hanada told Sakura, you should believe what you want to believe. Hanada was hitting Sakura with strikes that could kill her, and Sakura had to keep jumping back to avoid them. 
If that's all you've got, B asterisk TCH, then you've already lost. Sakura yelled as she saw a chance to attack Hanada and ran at her. As soon as the punch hit Hanada, however, blue energy shot out of her and turned it away from her. Hanada took this chance to close off the tenkutsu in one of Sakura's arms, making it impossible for her to fight with that arm again. Sakura jumped back and stomped on the ground, sending boulders flying into the air in front of her. She then started to throw the boulders at Hanada. Hanada charged through the pile of rocks, smashing and dodging them as best she could. Hanada didn't realize she had made a mistake until she had finished the volley and couldn't find Sakura. Sakura took advantage of this by jumping up and giving Hanada a powerful uppercut, which sent her flying into one of the temples. Sakura said, Bitch, this is over. No one can stand up after I punch them, and then she went to find Sasuke. But she couldn't go any further because two chains of lilac chakra were wrapped around her arms. Before he was lifted into the air and slammed into the ground, Sakura asked, What is this? She got up and looked up. Hanada was standing there with a few cuts on her body, but she seemed fine. Then she saw that two glowing chains of chakra were wrapped around her wrists. The ends of the chains looked like small scythes. Hanada explained as she began to spin the chains around her. This is one of the Uzumaki clan's secrets. Each female member of the clan had perfect chakra control, while the males had a huge amount of chakra stored up. The females used their perfect chakra control to learn the chakra chains technique, which Naruto let me learn from his mother's scrolls. I really think that this kind of weapon would be perfect for the Hyuga. Hanada threw one of the blades at Sakura, but she jumped up to avoid it. She realized she had made a mistake when another blade wrapped around her ankle and knocked her back down. Blood was dripping down Sakura's forehead as she slowly stood back up and glared at Hanada. She charged Hanada again, but this time she used a jutsu while she did it. She yelled, Earth release, stone armor. As rocks flew toward her and covered her in a suit of armor made of compressed stone. Hanada threw both scythes at Sakura once more, but this time they hit her armor and went right by her. Hanada was able to avoid Sakura's attacks because she was much slower with this armor on. Sakura yelled, Haha, you can't hurt me now, you be asterisk tch. As she got closer and tried to hit Hanada. Hanada asked as her hands turned blue and she hit points all over the stone armor, you think your armor can protect you from me? They both jumped away from each other, and Sakura's armor soon started to fall apart. Hanada said to Sakura, give up, you can't beat me, as she began to spin her chains again. Sakura yelled as she charged Hanada, I'll never give in to a whore like you and your demon. Hanada just let out a sigh and looked sad on her face. She thought, secure, if only you could see past the lies of the council. Hanada yelled, chakra release, blades of the lilac chain. As the spinning chakra blades began to glow and shoot lilac blades of energy at Sakura. Sakura couldn't stop the blades from coming right at her, so she closed her eyes and accepted her fate as the blades tore through her body. Hanada said to Sakura, I'm sorry, but I couldn't let you put the lives of my loved ones in danger. She then went to find Naruto. The fight between Kimimaro and Orochimaru. Kukakuku, so you think you can beat your old master now, Kimimaro? Orochimaru teased, trying to get Kimimaro to attack quickly and out of anger. You were never my master, Orochimaru. Once, I thought you were my father. Then you betrayed me, and Naruto became my brother, my equal. I will kill you for being one of the few people in my life who has ever shown me real kindness, Kimimaro said as he pulled out both of his white blades. So that's how we'll fight then? Orochimaru asked as he pulled his sword from his throat. Is it the grass cutter? What does the sword mean in Japanese? Kimimaro ran at Orochimaru as purple lightning wrapped around his sword. Both swords hit each other, making a loud clang and sending purple sparks flying into the air. As Kimimaro quickly hit Orochimaru, the air was full of clangs as he tried to defend himself. He kept sending sparks at Orochimaru with his two swords, which were too close for comfort, so he couldn't get close enough to attack. Dance of the Twin Willows 
Kimimaro yelled as he started to spin and attack while bone spikes shot out of his wrists. Orochimaru just barely avoided a blow to the neck, but then he was stabbed in the leg with the other sword and hit in the arm. And then he fell into a muddy puddle. Kimimaro knew something was wrong, so he jumped into the air and shot a lightning bolt at the spot he was standing on. A snake fell to the ground, but the huge purple lightning bolt tore it apart. Orochimaru laughed as he appeared behind Kimimaro and tried to cut off his head. What a powerful sword! Even Grass Cutter can't break the blade. I can't wait to take that blade from your dead body, he said. Kimimaro turned around and caught the blade between his two swords. The two kept fighting for control of the situation. Kimimaro yelled as he threw Orochimaru into a building, your corruption is like a cancer on society. It's time for you to face the consequences of your crimes. Kukuku, I've taken worse hits before Kimimaro. I hope that's not all you've got, said Orochimaru as he came at him faster than before and tried to break through his defenses. Finally, Orochimaru saw his chance and went for a killing blow around the neck. But when the blade was just an inch from the neck, a bone shot out from his shoulder and caught the blade, leaving Orochimaru open to another attack from Kimimaro. Kimimaro cut him twice across the chest, and Orochimaru's body shot back because the purple lightning on the blade was sending electricity through his body. Again, Orochimaru screamed in pain and fell to the ground as Kimimaro stood over his body. Kimimaro told Orochimaru, this is the end of it, but Orochimaru just looked up and started laughing at him. This isn't the end of me, Kimimaro. I haven't even shown you my true power yet. Orochimaru laughed as his body started to change into a giant mass of white snakes that grew into an even bigger white snake. This is it, Kukuku Kimimaro, said Orochimaru as he lunged at him with the intention of breaking him in half. Kimimaro jumped back and began to move out of the way of the giant snake's lunges. He finally grabbed both of his swords and hit Orochimaru in the head, but the sword just bounced off the armor's scales. Orochimaru yelled as he slammed Kimimaro into a temple with the end of his tail, Kukuku, you won't even be able to cut my skin. Kimimaro cursed, damn snake, as he stood back up. Once more, he jumped out of the way of Orochimaru's huge mouth. Then the tail went around again, and Kimimaro used it to jump higher into the air and onto the top of the temple. Orochimaru wrapped himself around the temple to stop Kimimaro from moving, then tried to bite him. Every time Kimimaro jumped, he lost space, and he was about to get stuck. What should I do? I can't get out of this circle without that snake-biting jerk biting me in half. Kimimaro thought this as he jumped out of the circle and seemed to make a mistake. Orochimaru yelled, fool. As he grabbed Kimimaro by the throat and blood splattered everywhere. But it wasn't Kimimaro's blood because Orochimaru's mouth had 30 sharp spikes that were dripping blood. Then, all of a sudden, Orochimaru started to scream in pain as sparks of electricity hit his body and burned and smoked him. Orochimaru struggled and threw Kimimaro's body in a different direction. Orochimaru was thrashing around in pain when Kimimaro flipped in the air and landed on a temple across from him. He looked up and glared at Kimimaro. Do you know what happens when lightning strikes a snake? Kimimaro asked as he raised his swords into the air and a purple bolt of lightning hit them, making them glow with power. The same as everything else. Lightning release. Bolt of the heavens. Yelled Kimimaro as he pointed the glowing swords at Orochimaru. A huge bolt of lightning hit Orochimaru and blew him to kingdom come. A fight between Itachi and Sasuke. So, you think you can finally beat me, you stupid brother? Itachi asked Sasuke, who looked angry. I have grown to hate and despise you, Itachi, and now I am strong enough to kill you for good. Yelled Sasuke as he turned on his sherigan and drew his sword. He uses the same one on the show. He ran at Itachi and tried as hard as he could to cut him, but Itachi showed off his skill by avoiding each attack without much trouble. He finally pulled out his one tanto and started blocking attacks and attacking back when he could. This went on for a while, with neither side being able to get a good shot at the other. Itachi did the same thing, so Sasuke jumped back and fired a grand fireball. 
Itachi did the same thing, and the two huge fireballs exploded in the middle of each other, making a huge explosion of fire. Sasuke ran through the explosion with a charged Chidori and hit Itachi, who wasn't ready for it. Sasuke said, Revenge is mine, Itachi. Itachi slowly lifted his hand, poked Sasuke in the nose, and then pointed to their side. Itachi was sitting on one of the steps. Sasuke looked back at the Itachi he had just stabbed as the copy broke apart into crows and flew away. Itachi jumped away when Sasuke came at him again. He landed in the middle of a huge arena on the battlefield. The ancient arena was full of craters and explosions as the two threw jutsu after jutsu at each other to try to kill each other. As the battle went on, Itachi began to get tired because he was slowly dying from an illness no one knew about. So Sasuke was hurting him, and he couldn't do anything about it. This is it for you, brother, said Sasuke as he charged up at Chidori and charged at Itachi. Just before he touched, a blade of wind flew at him, making him jump back. If he had kept going, the wind would have cut off his hand. Sorry, Sasuke, but I can't let you kill one of my precious people. When I was four, he became my protector in the village and looked after me until he left the village the night your clan was killed, Naruto said casually from the leader's box of the stadium while wearing a blue cape. Sasuke yelled, get away from this demon. This is between my brother and me. Naruto pulled out his sword and said, I don't think I will, Sasuke. If you want to kill Itachi, you'll have to beat me first. Then get ready to die, Naruto, he said as he charged at Naruto. The two fought fiercely, and loud clangs could be heard all around the arena. Soon, the two of them were charging at each other and jumping around the arena while taking single attacks. Naruto yelled, Kanpeki Rakurai! As he sent a blast of energy at Sasuke. Sasuke fought back with an attack of his own. Chidori stream! Yelled Sasuke as Naruto's attack hit a dragon made of electricity. A huge blast of energy filled the arena, and anything caught in the middle of the blast was instantly vaporized. Again, they fought over who was in charge in the middle of the crater. Sasuke, you can't beat me, so just give up. Naruto yelled as he started to push Sasuke back. Sasuke yelled, never. As he gave Naruto one last big push to get him to move back. Naruto yelled, fine. Kanpeki Rakurai. As a blast of energy shot out of his sword and pushed Sasuke back as he tried to stop the energy from getting to his body. He turned around and heard someone yell from behind him. As another blast of blue energy hit Sasuke, the voice yelled, this is it. Kanpeki Rakurai. Since Sasuke couldn't stop the one in front of him, the two blasts collided right in front of him and tore him apart in another huge blast of energy. Sai saw the end of the battle between everyone who was fighting. At first, Didera was hard to beat, but in the end, his ink beasts easily beat Didara's clay creations and tore him apart. Lord Danzo will want to know what went on here today. Lord Danzo was wrong about Naruto being a threat. Sai thought this as he turned to go back to Konoha, but before he left, he caught a glimpse of a person in an orange swirl mask. Damn it, Itachi, your brother just messed you up. I'm sorry I had to kill him, but he was too far gone to even try to save him, Naruto said as he helped Itachi to his feet. Itachi asked, where is Yudataki? Don't worry about it, Naruto. I realized that while you were fighting with him. It looks like I'm the only Uchiha left. Where is Yudataki? As the two walked slowly through the battlegrounds, Naruto said, we're going to go get him now. Hanada and Kimimaro soon joined them, and they quickly got to where Yudataki was still tied up and trying to get free. When Naruto started to walk toward him, a huge wall of fire appeared in front of them and cut them off from Yudataki. Naruto could do nothing as Madara came out of nowhere and picked Yudataki up off the ground. Thanks, Naruto, for getting rid of the Konoha Shinobi. Now they think you're another Jinchuriki, which could make Danzo feel threatened. Also, did you know that Kiri wants their bijus back and will do anything to get them back? Well, ta-ta, said Madara as he stepped through a portal and stopped Naruto from doing anything. 
Naruto yelled, damn you, Madara. I swear I'll kill you for all the lives you've taken. As everyone else looked sad at the ground. Killer B, Fu, and Gara all found them this way in the ruins. After telling Naruto the bad news, he asked, how did your part of the mission go? Madara showed up at the last minute and took Yudataki. B, Fu, and Gara. I need you to tell your cages that Madara will soon awaken the Jubi and that Kiri and Konoha might join forces with them. Iwa is still too weak from being attacked by the Akatsuki to do anything. Said Naruto as he regained his composure. So the Jubi will be free in a week, and then only the four of us can kill it? Gara asked. Correct, but hopefully our four villages can get there in time to stop the process. We don't have time. Itachi can lead us to the hideout. I will have Uzi ready for war in two days, and we will all meet in Kumo on the fourth day to prepare for the final battle. Then we will attack with everything we have and beat our opponents. If that doesn't work, the Jinchuriki will fight the Jubi. Naruto said as the others nodded. Hurry, we'll go to Uzi for now, and you can send your messages from there, Naruto said as he and the others ran as fast as they could after him. It was almost time for the final battle that would decide the fate of the elemental countries. Hundreds of ninja from villages all over the country will fight, and hundreds of them will die. In the end, only a small number of people will be able to protect the rest of the world from the evil that is trying to take over. If they fail, darkness and death will spread across the land until there is nothing left of hope. In the land of lightning, thousands of shinobi were getting ready for the biggest battle the world had ever seen. They had two days to break through their enemies' lines and stop the most dangerous animal ever to lie from coming back to life. Naruto watched as many tents were taken down so they could walk for a long time. Kumo, Uzi, Suna, and Waterfall all sent all the ninja they could spare to fight. The allies of the weaker Akatsuki, Konoha and Mizu, were fighting against them. To stop the Jubi from coming back to life, they had to march to the land of demons. The statue was locked up in a mountain fortress that looked out over a valley. There was only one way in and out of the passage, which made it a tough nut to crack. Naruto asked one of his old friends, Shikamaru, do we have enough men to break through and stop the Jubi from coming back to life? Just one day ago, the Hyuga clan arrived after leaving Konoha with their old group of new students and their senseis. Konohamaru also came to fight with his boss. Their size and intelligence would help them a lot in the coming battle. He calmly replied, I think we have more than enough men to break through. They all have something worth fighting for, and the others fight for the will of others. We will get through in time, unless they are ahead of schedule. Knowing Madara, I wouldn't be surprised if he started early. We need to move now. I'll go get B to get Kumo moving, and Gara already has Suna ready to go. Fu will take less time to get her village moving, Naruto said as he left. When he walked into the command tent, he saw Tsunade, Jiraiya, Killer B and his brother Fu, Gara and his siblings Kimimaro and Hanada, and Killer B's brother Fu. We have to move tonight before Madara unleashes everything he has on the world. They are holed up in a mountain fortress in the land of demons, he said. Killer B's brother asked, who are we up against there? Naruto said, Konoha and Mizu sent their armies there to strengthen the Akatsuki, so that's where most of our ninja will be used. Only a few will go to the ceiling chamber, as Itachi suggested, because if the Jubi does wake up, we can't let anyone get caught in the crossfire. So, what is the plan? Tsunade asked. Naruto said, Kumo, Suna, and Uzi will all be at the front to destroy their front with our combined elemental attacks, while I lead the Jinchuriki through to Madara himself and kill him before he finishes the extraction. If that doesn't work, at least we Jinchuriki will be there to fight the Jubi at the front. We should be able to give everyone enough time to get out. The best of Madara's men will protect him, and it won't be easy to get to the ceiling chamber, eh? Killer B's brother, right? Said. Naruto said, no, it won't. That's why the armies of each hidden village have thrown everything they have at him and his allies. Once we Jinchuriki are done, we can cause a lot of trouble on the way to the chamber. 
This is the only chance we have to beat him for good. Naruto continued, Tsunade and Jiraiya will lead Uzi's forces into battle, with Tsunade in charge of the whole operation. Jiraiya-sensei must have the strongest toads to do a lot of damage to the enemy shinobi. There is also a good chance of running into snakes, since Kabuto is still alive and on the run. Naruto finished by saying, A will lead Kumo into battle. Tamari and Konkuro will also lead their village, since Gara will be with me on this mission. Kimimaro and Hanada will lead Waterfall, since they have spent a lot of time training the village. Tamari asked, So, what do we do if the Jubi wakes up? Everyone must leave right away and get to safety. If we fight, that mountain will be gone by the end of the battle. We must hurry and get all of our men to the mountain by this time tomorrow, so go get them ready to leave right away, Naruto said as he and Hanada and Kimimaro left the tent. The voice of the once sick Hayate Gekko said, that was a good plan, Naruto. I'm proud to have trained you, even if you've had better senseis in the past. Hayate Sensei, even though I've gotten much stronger since you taught me, I will never forget you as my first teacher. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be alive today, or I'd be much weaker and more annoying, Naruto said with a smile. That's probably true. Both sides are going to lose a lot of people in this battle. Are you sure you're ready for this? Hayate asked. No, but that's never stopped me before, Naruto said. When is Yugo due? He asked, curious because it had been a long time since he'd seen his first sensei. Since Uzi was made, people who escaped from Konoha have come to Uzi. Yugo was one of the first to come. She's going to have a boy in four months, and Hanada and I were hoping you and you would be his godparents, Hayate told Naruto, who smiled at him. Naruto asked Hanada as he looked at her smiling face, would you like to be his godfather? She yelled as she hugged Hayate, I'd love to be one of his godparents. Well, we should go get ready. We're leaving in an hour, sensei, so we can't waste any time, Naruto told his two friends as they sped off to their tents. He and Hanada shared one. When Naruto felt Hanada hug him from behind, he was putting most of his gear in light scrolls. He could feel the hot tears falling on his shoulder. He turned around and looked into her eyes, which were pale violet. Hanada, everything is going to be okay. We'll get through this together, and not even the most powerful demon in the world can stop us, he said with a warm smile to the love of his life. She sobbed into his chest, I know, but so many things could go wrong tomorrow, and I just don't want to lose you, Naruto. I couldn't live without you. I know, Hanada, but I promise you that I will win tomorrow, that we will grow old together and have many children, Naruto said as he lifted Hanada's head and gave her a passionate kiss. They were finally forced to split up. For a few minutes, they just stood there and looked into each other's eyes. Then they kissed again and had to start getting ready. When they were done packing, they went outside the tent and saw that all of the ninja were ready for the last battle. Suddenly, a huge ball of fire shot into the air, which caused the huge army of ninja to split up into divisions that had already been set up and move out to the biggest battle between ninjas in the history of the world. It was much easier than one might think to move an army of ninja through the landscape. They were so good at what they did that it didn't seem like 100 men were heading toward the land of demons. On the morning of the attack, the sun broke over the horizon. For the past day, they had been hit by ambushes. But they kept going because they knew the fate of the world depended on them. If they failed, everyone would die. The most powerful demon in the world would kill them all. Naruto had been staring at the night for an hour until morning came. Since he became a ninja, he had been thinking about his life and the places he had been. He thought, today is the day that all of my hard work will pay off. Then he felt two smaller arms wrap around his chest. She whispered in his ear, Naruto, why did you get up so early? You'll need your rest for the battle. He said with sadness, I can't sleep, Hanada. I have too much to think about, and this could be our last day on earth. This isn't like you, Naruto, she told him. What happened to your belief that if you never give up, you can't lose? Everyone here believes in you, but I believe in you the most. 
Don't ever give up on the fight, Naruto. Naruto said, Thanks, Hanada. You're right. I won't doubt myself, but you should be careful yourself. Don't worry, I can handle myself in the upcoming battle. After all, I'm the only ninja in the world who can beat the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi, she teased, making Naruto smile despite his feeling of doom. Naruto said, that's a big deal in and of itself, since even 20s ranked ninja couldn't beat him. But a ninja jumped in front of them and broke up their moment of love. The ninja told the leader, sir, the attack will start in an hour. Konoha and Mizu have sent their ninja to meet ours, and your team should be ready to move at any time. Okay, go tell my team that I'll be there soon for the mission. Hanada, we need to get ready for the mission, Naruto said as he got out of Hanada's arms and started putting on his battle armor and all the weapons he usually carries. Twenty minutes later, Naruto and the rest of the Jinchuriki team were at the edge of the mountain. Thousands of other ninja were busy getting ready to attack the enemy stronghold at the entrance of the valley, where Madara was hiding in the shadow of a mountain. The main part of the stronghold was a huge wall that was about three miles long and protected the whole entrance to the mountains. It was built on a slope, which gave the defenders an advantage in height. Most of the defenders were at smaller outposts and the three main fortifications that ran along the wall. The main entrance to the mountain was then guarded by an inner base, but Itachi said that only Kisame and he knew about a secret entrance. If Madara hadn't badly hurt Kisame when they tried to run away, he would be helping in the battle. Itachi was the Jinchuriki's guide into the fortress, so they wouldn't get lost on the way to the chamber. The mountain itself was made up of a complex network of caves. Madara probably sent his best shinobi inside to wait for the teams that were sent to break the seal. Naruto said, Okay, B and Fu, get ready to use your most powerful attack on their wall. We'll punch a hole in the defenses and attack with everyone else. Gara, your job is to use your sand to protect our spearhead force from powerful jutsu. Once we're through, we'll move through the base as quickly as possible while causing as much chaos as possible. A masked Kumo Shinobi said, Sir, other leaders have confirmed that they are ready for the attack. They are just waiting for your signal to start the attack. Naruto yelled as he pulled out his sword, then let's get this show on the road. Fire the three main strongholds, and get ready for the biggest battle of your lives. The other Jinchuriki and Itachi yelled, yes, sir. As he led them on the mission. All three weapons started to glow in the color of their chakra at the same time. B's was turquoise, and Fu's was forest green. Naruto's was azure blue. Together, they sent their strongest attacks at three of the most important stone strongholds along the long wall. When the three energy blasts hit each stronghold, they caused huge explosions. With that, thousands of alliance shinobi charged out of the trees. At the front was the group that had to defeat Madara. The defenders started shooting at the huge group of shinobi with everything they could find. People in the crowd were hit with arrows, bombs, and jutsu. Luckily, Uzi Ninja were in front and used water jutsu to protect themselves from the flood of weapons. Gara used his sand to make a huge, moving wall that kept a lot of shinobi safe from enemy fire. Once they were close enough to the wall, the attackers used their own jutsu to break it down. As the attacker climbed the wall, enemy ninja poured out of the hole. A huge fight broke out at each opening and on the walls. Naruto took care of the defenders who came after him quickly. By putting his spirit power into his sword, he was able to cut through any weapon that hit him. B used his first release, which split his sword into seven electric friendly blades. He dove into a group of defenders, spinning like a tornado and ripping through them like they were butter. Fu and Gara also pulled out their swords and started killing a lot of the defenders. Gara's first move was to let out a rough-looking Zanbatu that looked like sandpaper. If it cut you, your skin and organs would stick to it, and when it was pulled out, it did a lot of damage to your skin and organs. Fu's release was Scrimitor, which gave her the same power as Wood Release to make and control plants. She liked to make sharp vines that grew from the ground and cut through anything they touched. Naruto saw a way into the stronghold that led further in, 
so he made a huge dragon out of wind blades and sent it straight at a group of Junin from Mizu. When they hit each other, the wind blades cut them all to pieces, and they all blew up. All of the Jinchuriki started killing the ninja along the path after he showed them how to do it. Itachi was killing anyone left behind because he didn't want to be killed by accident by the Jinchuriki. He turned around for a second and saw that the people on the walls were still fighting. He did notice a part of the wall that was starting to fall. Hanada and Kimimaro's best ninja were leading the attack on the wall. Hanada and Kimimaro led their elites, who were chosen by both of them to work well with each other, into battle. Hayate, Kiba, Choji, Neji, Tenten, Li, Ino, Shino, and Hiyashi, who was Hanada's father, were all ninjas in the division. Hanada was so happy that all of her friends had left Konoha before this attack started, because if they were there, she would have to fight them. Hanada saw a huge fireball coming out of the wall, so she quickly shot a huge water bullet at it. When it hit, it made a cloud of steam that blocked the defender's view of her division. When Kimimaro got to the wall, he pulled out both of his blades and shot a wave of dark violet energy at it, which blew it up. When he jumped in, he strengthened his bones and cut any defender who was stupid enough to jump at him. Hanada soon came after, and she started to protect Kimimaro's back with her chakra chains, which she used to tear apart defenders. While Choji was getting bigger, he crashed into another part of a wall. Kiba and his dog flew through the gap. Kiba's dog cut a hole in the defense with his teeth. A kanai came out of nowhere and was about to pierce his head, but a small cloud of bugs got in the way. Shino came out of hiding and began to help his friends from behind by taking their chakra. Hanada and Kimimaro were fighting hard alongside each other, but they were surrounded by a huge number of defenders. A sword got through her defense, but it didn't go all the way through. The man holding the blade dropped it and started holding his head and yelling in pain. Hanada turned around and saw Ino making a seal with her hands to show that she had just saved her life. She looked at the central stronghold that Naruto had attacked and saw that most of the defensive wall was destroyed and half of the base was covered in smoke. She gave herself a quick smile and kept going through the outpost. Shikamaru was watching the battle from a makeshift base of operations that Jiraiya had set up on a huge toad. It was very old and just liked to sleep, so it wasn't useful in battle. However, putting a platform on its head made a good headquarters. It looks like Naruto and his team are moving faster than planned, and most of our men are breaking through the outer wall. Most likely, the defenders will retreat to the valley's inner plains and set up a static defense before retreating all the way to the mountain fortification. Shikamaru thought, Naruto has to get in before they go into the fortification, or else there will be too many people to get to the chamber in time. Shikamaru pointed at three messengers and said, You, go tell the leaders of the divisions that we need to slow down in the valley to give the Biju team more time. Then he saw Jiraiya call up three huge toads, and he thinks Kabuto also called up two huge snakes. Gamabunta himself put a layer of oil on one of the main defenses while the other two toads fought against the two snakes that had been called. Shikamaru watched from his base as Jiraiya fired a ball of fire at the stronghold and set it on fire in a spectacular show. Naruto and his team quickly left their stronghold and were now jumping from rock to rock in a huge forest full of big rocks. They moved forward quickly enough to avoid running into units that were retreating. They did, however, run into a few groups of shinobi who were going to the front to help. Needless to say, they didn't make it there. As they jumped to another boulder, Naruto asked, how far until we get to the entrance you used to get away from Itachi? Itachi replied, it's right up ahead at the mountain with the crooked peak. We have to hurry, everyone move faster. Naruto shouted. It took them only two minutes to reach the entrance, where a large outpost stood guard. Well, it was to be expected that Madara would guard this entrance after you escaped from Itachi, Naruto said as he took his position. Get ready to attack, we can't waste any time. Right away, they threw their strongest attacks at the fortification and began to cross the 100-yard gap between them. Gara's sand caught explosives in the air and fired them back at the fortifications, which were surrounded by ninja who kept firing jutsu. 
Naruto made three big wind tornadoes and sent them at the walls, where they blew people away. Fu threw vines right at the wall and covered it with them. Itachi used a fireball to light the vines on fire. The attackers made such a huge fire that the enemy had no choice but to hide behind the walls. B wrapped his hand in lightning and smashed the wall, causing a section of the wall to fall on a group of defenders who were hiding behind it. Itachi yelled, the front door should be in the back of the main building. They cut through the defenders, but were only scratched and burned a few times. A few Hyuga decided to stay with them, but they were useless because Biju could force their chakra points open. Naruto rushed through the building's gate and used two Rasengans to kill most of the men in the building's courtyard. His style of taijutsu used roaring wind blades that always wrapped around his whole fist. He was so strong that if he hit someone, their insides would be cut to pieces. B was the same way, and he came up with a jutsu that was like the rakery but not as strong and could be used for a long time. They moved in perfect unison, cutting down anyone who got too close. The ones in the back stayed close and killed the ones that B and Naruto didn't get to first. Soon, the outpost was free of enemies, and they were at a big, strong gate that led to a secret entrance into the base. Would you like to do it, B? Naruto asked as he pointed to the gate. B walked up to the door and, showing how strong he was, smashed it open. This revealed a large cave that went up the mountain and toward the main fortress. As they rushed into the dark cave, Naruto told Itachi, lead the way and don't get lost. We can't afford to get lost or lose anyone in here, so check your corners carefully. Hanada and Kimimaro had just met up with Tsunade's group in the valley outside the huge fortress guarding the main mountain, where they were all heading. The losses were not as bad as they thought they would be, but they still had to get past one more obstacle before they were free. They still had to fight Kumo and Waterfall to get to where they would start the final attack. It had been hard for them to get to their staging area because the enemy had set up a fixed defense and put bombs on most of the routes. Even though most of their teams had a Byakugan and most of the traps didn't work. But you couldn't say the same about Kumo and Suna. After waiting for a few minutes, the Rakage told them they were in place and ready for the final attack on the enemy. At once, a lot of jutsu were thrown at the walls of the huge stronghold. Then the shinobi charged into battle. Instead of waiting for the enemy to come to them like last time, the defenders also charged, and the two sides fought on a plane 100 yards from the walls. Hanada used her sword to cut through the ninja around her as she tried to stay alive and protect the others. She caught a glimpse of Tsunade out of the corner of her eye and saw a man approach her from behind and try to kill her. Hanada jumped into action and yelled for Tsunade to duck. Tsunade did, and Hanada threw a kanai through the head of the ninja who was trying to kill Tsunade. Jiraiya rode into battle on a battle toad and killed every ninja who got in his way. Twin Rasengans met anyone who dared to challenge the toad sage, or in this case, a battle axe. Jiraiya was meditating on top of the toad while two elder toads sat on his shoulder. When he finally opened his eyes, he saw that they had turned into the golden eyes of a toad, and his nose grew bigger and got warts. He suddenly moved away from the toad, and one of his punches sent about 15 unfortunate leaf ninja flying into the air. Hayate used his dance of the crescent moon style to cut through a lot of shinobi. Because of the shadow clones, it looked like he was four times as fast as he actually was. He dodged a leaf ninja's horizontal attack and then hit him in the stomach with a fireball. Not everyone was winning their battles, though. Many of the Hyuga and Inazuka who stayed in the leaf made quick work of their enemies in the close quarters of the plains. The Nara, Akamichi, and Yamamaka clans worked together to hold the middle of the line, but they were losing because Tsunade's best force was leading the attackers. Since the attackers were more numerous, the defenders just waited for Madara to release the Jubi and use its power to defeat the attackers. The defenders were slowly but surely pushed back to the walls of the last fortification. All fighting stopped at once when the ground started shaking so hard that many of the mountains around the valley started to fall apart. Dark storm clouds began to circle the main mountain, and red lightning started to strike the peak over and over again. Then they felt a huge amount of dark chakra leak out of the mountain, 
followed by a wave of dark chakra that knocked even the strongest ninja to the ground. They all watched in horror as a pressure inside the mountain caused it to start to crack and grow bigger. Naruto and his group followed Itachi to the top of the big mountains, where they went deeper into the tunnels. Since they got to the mountain, they hadn't run into any particularly strong shinobi. They broke through one of the tunnels and found a large cavern with holes in the ceiling that let in some dim light. But the people waiting for them on the other side of the mountain were the biggest surprise. Madara stood there with two men in Akatsuki cloaks. The Hokage of Konoha, Danzo, and Seven Anbu from his root program were close by. Naruto, it's good to see you again. Is that you, Itachi? I didn't think you'd join forces with Konoha, especially after what you did to save Konoha. Anyway, I'm sorry to tell you this, Naruto, but it's too late to stop the Jubi from awakening. In just a few minutes, it will awaken, and with its power I will bring all of the ninja villages to their knees. Madara said. Naruto yelled, Madara, why am I not surprised that you would join forces with the traitor Danzo? Also, you are going to kill everyone if you don't stop now. The Jubi is playing with your mind, and if it gets out, it will kill everyone on the planet. This was his last attempt to convince Madara that his plan was stupid. Shut up, you spoiled brat. You betrayed your own village by attacking and killing hundreds of ninja, and I can't wait to kill you myself. Said Danzo. Naruto took his sword out of its scabbard and said, I'm the traitor. Your treachery killed my mother and father the day I was born. You let Orochimaru in at the Chunin exams and set up my banishment for your own gain. No, Danzo, I will kill you today for my mother, father, and grandfather. Naruto told them, Itachi, fight Madara, B, fight the other two Akatsuki, and Gara and Fu, keep those seven root ninja off my back while I kill this piece of trash, and they all went to work. B jumped at the Akatsuki ninja wanting to end the fight quickly because he needed the Akatsuki ninja's energy if they had to fight the Jubi later. Both ninja ran away, and one of them had a huge Zanbatu that B knew belonged to one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. He had white hair and sharp teeth, and the other was a big man with a dark energy inside of him. The smaller one came at B with his Zanbatu, but B easily blocked it and cut into the ninja. But when the wounds were touched, water came out instead of blood, and they quickly healed. In that moment of confusion, the bigger man tried to hit B with a powerful punch, but B easily ducked under it, and the blast of chakra went over B. B turned around and stuck two of his seven blades into the man's arms, pinning him against the wall. Then he turned his attention to the other one. The two of them started to fight again, but this time B put lighting chakra into the blade. The lightning started to hurt the ninja, and soon he was too weak to fight. B then knocked him out. The bigger man broke free of the swords that were holding him against the wall and started to draw on a dark chakra. His body shrank and shrunken until it looked like a demonic creature that was putting out a lot of chakra. The two warriors charged each other and started a complicated dance of attacks. B's swords were hard as steel, so Jubo used his arms to block them. When B saw this, he grabbed both of Jubo's arms, which had claws on the ends, and thrust one of his swords into Jubo's stomach. This killed him instantly. Fu and Gara had a hard time fighting the Seven Root Ninja because they all fought at the same time. Fu and Gara had definitely fought together before, and their teamwork was almost as good as Naruto and Hinata's. Together, their combined strength was more than enough to beat the Root Ninja. Gara's sand acted as a defense while Fu used the power of her biju to kill any ninja who left themselves vulnerable. The fight between Naruto and Danzo was one of the most one-sided. Naruto was out for blood because Danzo poisoned Naruto's mother after she gave birth to him, and he was also the one who told Madara that Kashina was going to have a baby. That would later lead to the Kiyubi being set free in Minato's death. Then, he let Orochimaru out into the streets of Konoha during the Chunin exams because he wanted Serutobi to die so he could become Hokage. As soon as they started fighting, Naruto appeared in front of Danzo and stabbed him in the heart, but it turned out to be a genjutsu. He saw Danzo right behind him and stopped the kanai that was going to hit him in the head. He asked, 
How did you come up with that genjutsu? Danzo just smiled and jumped back to take off the bandages on his face and one arm. There, he showed a total of six Sherigan eyes. It looked like there should have been seven eyes, but one was shut. So that's why you wanted the Uchiha clan to die, so you could get as many Sherigan eyes as you wanted. You're even sicker than I thought, Naruto said as he killed Danzo again with a Rasengan, noticing that another eye closed as he did so. Don't tell me what to do, boy. We live in a world where power is everything, and I will do everything I can to get more of it. Shouted Danzo before Naruto cut off his head, leaving him with four eyes. Naruto said to Danzo, I haven't even shown half of my power yet. This will be the end of your corrupted way of life, as he threw a wind blade that Danzo couldn't avoid. Still three eyes. Even just defending himself against the angry Jinchuriki was hard for Danzo. Naruto was just so much better than him that it wasn't even surprising. Even when he didn't have the Kyubi inside of him, Naruto could beat most Biju and come out on top. Naruto killed three more fake Danzos before he was finally faced with a real one. Naruto made Danzo fall to his knees. You're stupid if you think I'll beg, said the person who wanted to start a war. I don't want you to beg. I want you to die. He yelled as he cut Danzo's head off for real this time. During his fight with probably the most skilled Uchiha since he was born, Madara saw all of his allies get killed by the Jinchuriki. Madara, on the other hand, spent most of his time just avoiding and phasing through his attacks because he was just buying time. Madara disappeared for a moment and then reappeared in front of a huge stone gate covered with ancient writing. He could tell the Jubi was ready. All he had to do was open the gate for all the chakra to flow out. Naruto tried one last time to stop the crazy Uchiha by shouting, Madara, don't do it. The Jubi will kill you and everyone else. When Madara looked at the Namikaze, he couldn't help but see his old rival Minato standing there. Madara sneered at him, turned around, and fired his chakra into four different locks on the door. This was the last step in letting the Jubi out. No, we failed. We have to get out of here quickly and warn everyone before it's too late. Naruto yelled as he and the others started running down the cave network. They could feel the evil chakra of the Jubi starting to leak out of the gate. When Naruto saw a light coming from behind the wall, he shot a burst of chakra at the wall, which blew it away. When they looked over the edge, they could see the battle and the bodies on the plains. We have to jump. Naruto said as he and the others jumped out. They went over the edge quickly, and just before they hit the ground, Naruto made a cushion of air so that everyone could land safely. When they turned toward the mountain, they saw it bulge before it exploded in a huge blast of dark energy that only the Jinchuriki could stand through. From the top of the mountain came the head of a huge animal. It was a huge dragon with ten tails. Its scales were jet black, and its eyes were blood red. It was the Jubi, the most powerful and bloodthirsty demon in the world. It looked down at the battle below and smiled happily at the thought of what was to come. Naruto said, and so it begins, as he and the other Jinchuriki took out their swords and started their final moves. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you, see you all in my next video.